Thank you very much for staying with us. It's now time for Plus Trending, where we look at the topics that drove conversation on social media over the weekend. Exactly. On Sunday night, DSTV made an appearance on the trend map following rumors that both uh, pay TV platforms, DSTV and GoTV, had been hacked. Over the weekend, the LGBTQ and the hashtag Lauren protest made it to the uh, map, closely trailing uh, end police brutality in Nigeria. It is safe to say that uh, practically every Nigerian active on social media can brag about knowing why these hashtags uh, lit up the trend map. But trust us to, of course, bring you new updates that will interest you the more. And of course, here to also help us do justice to these conversations, our social media manager, Buki November. Miss November, welcome to Hi, the breakfast. Hi, Hi, I'm sorry. Okay, okay weekend? let's start with... Is that your night was short? It was short. It was the whole weekend. Yeah, the whole weekend was short. Traffic. <laughs> I, I can <laughs> relate to that. Right. I can relate. <laughs> All right, let, let's start with the GoTV DSTV uh, uh -huh. scenario. Were they really hacked? Okay, so let's 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 go from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. See, I'm really excited about these topics because they're they're borderline funny. So um, Nigerians woke up to no, maybe not wake up. They just turned on their TV stations and discovered that. All channels on their Go TV and DSTV platforms were working. And you know, this, this um, pay TV, they, they, they give you channels per subscription. So if you don't subscribe to certain bouquets, you don't get certain things. So imagine they are shocked when they realize all these stations are working, you know? And then, plus the, the fact that, oh, Anonymous has been very active lately on social media. So they just decided, you know what? They hacked their account. Especially because DSTV almost never gives you anything for free. Even during the lockdown, they increased the cost of subscription. So you don't expect them to give you anything for free. I mean, forget answers. Who cares about no, DSTV giving stuff? No, but they did at for... some point. I mean, it's they not, did it at come... some no, point. It okay, let's be fair to them. No, you don't understand. Well, this did, thing I doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. I, they did at some point. I, I have if, never... you, if, you, if you subscribe to a lower version, they upgrade you to No, but that's not version. free. You don't understand. Like, you just give you something for free. <laughs> <laughs> you get. So they just went on social media like, oh, well, they've hacked them. Like, there's nothing they can do, but they've hacked them. But then... I went, uh, then there was the propaganda part of it where people said, okay, probably the federal government is working hand in hand with DSTV to give you free TV so that you don't go out to protest. And I'm like, huh, right. If they give you a free TV, as they've said, would there be lights to watch it? You now burn your petrol to watch the free TV. Now, I'd rather just go protest, man. <laughs> you get. So these guys now came up to say, I, re I read on Vanguard that, oh, no, that they didn't actually hack DSTV. Actually, they had even sent emails or SMSs, I think, to their subscribers saying that, okay, between the 17th and the 19th, they were going to be doing an upgrade on their platform. But this upgrade said that it was going to affect payment um, options, not necessarily, yeah, so on this day, sorry. So um, this day reports that they did send messages to their subscribers. And this, um, the message was saying, okay, that there was going to be an upgrade between the 17th and 19th, and this, uh, this upgrade during this period was going to affect payment options and self-care self, self um, care portals. It never mentioned anything about free, free channel. People that didn't even pay for sub their DSTV subscription and GoTV, they were getting free channels like that. And you want to say that, well, DSTV just, it just happened, you know. It, they, they did it on purpose, please. The gist online is that they hacked them, and that is what people are sticking to. On social media, there's, there's, there's no explanation for it. And really? they even said that they, they, they but they announced that they will come up with a press release, like an official statement saying what exactly happened. So the, maybe the, the upgrade that affected being quoted as the, coming from the DSTV are mainly anonymous. So that yeah. uh, some um, persons there are. But well, when I woke up this morning, I did when immediately I saw the story, I checked. All the channels that I didn't subscribe to, none of them came up, you know. So I was wondering, it, it, was it really true or okay. some other... No, yesterday yeah. was true. Yesterday. Yeah. But as I this morning, of course, I left home like really, really early and all, so I didn't check. But as I yesterday, it was, it was true. I okay. have a full bouquet, so I don't know. Please, don't even don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do I that. I know what it's showing and what's not showing. Don't do that. You, oh, you watch this. Sorry. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, let, other... Let's go check some other uh, yeah, topics. Yeah, exactly. Um, you could go ahead. Oh, uh, the conversation about the LGBT and the lorry protest. Uh, which of these would you prefer to talk about, really? Okay, so um, all three of them are related. They're all linked. So the lorry protest... Of course, you know, protests for hashtag answers is still on across all parts of the country. And then the end police brutality in Nigeria, it's also linked to answers. But then there's the hashtag 
LGBTQ, which is the point I want to talk about. Yeah, I'm, good. I'm so, wondering, do we have that kind of community um, in Nigeria, considering that we have a law against... Um, you know, same-sex relationships. Doesn't mean they wouldn't so. exist. There might be, you know, those laws, but mm -hmm. they still exist. You know, so you <laughs> probably have to just be. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to keep quiet on that because I have not seen an official group come out to say, "Oh, we are LGBTQ in Nigeria," because we know 14 years and the rest of that. We know the law. Yeah, but yesterday, um, what's your name again? Yeah, Feminist Coalition tweeted, and Feminist Coalition, if you know them, they, they are popular on Twitter. They've been, they've been fighting this NSAS cause, they've been, chat, they've, been very, they've been at the forefront of the conversation. So yesterday, the Twitter handle put up a post say, saying, our communal fight to hashtag NSAS is inclusive of the LGBTQ plus community who are harassed, assaulted, and killed by the police. They deserve the same justice we seek, and even more so as they are also targets of the law. You can't be what you fight against. Hashtag queer Nigerian lives matter. First off, people on social media, I don't know why they were asking. There's Google asking what the meaning of LGBTQ is. I mean, you know the LGBT, the Q part is the questioning or yeah. your... Exactly. So that answers that question. So they put up this tweet and then everybody went too crazy on social media. Because they, first off, they, they felt like these people wanted to take the conversation away from hashtag NSARS to now focus on LGBTQ. And the comments were hilarious. I was just laughing. Because you just see how Nigeria, is it, how homophobic, right? That's the word. Yeah. How, how Nigerians reacted. Many people were just, Segalin commented, and was like, no, don't take this conversation away from um, hashtag NSAS. This thing is about NSAS. Yeah, this is certainly not the first time. I guess it's because it's coming from the people who you say are from the, uh, are the, at the forefront. forefront of the because I think well, about earlier last week, I saw tweets about um, some of them coming on social media to say they were being harassed when they went to be part of the protest. Yeah, so and people also said then that they shouldn't distract. So why are they tweeting so, about so it? So I feel, I feel that is... Those are the things that prompted the tweet from the feminist uh, call. They mm. basically had seen some of those reports and decided that, oh, it would be great to also speak out in favor of those people. But where it went wrong is, and that's what you know, my own understanding is, it was just ill-timed. It, it just wasn't the time, mostly because of how sensitive we are towards that conversation. Mm -hmm. So it was ill-timed, and then it now created space for people to push the narrative that the feminist call was pushing for LGBTQ rights, and that was what they truly stand for. And I will once again say it is because of how sensitive we are to those conversations. I personally didn't say anything wrong with what they said, um, because they might say that thing to any in any other direction. You could talk about it with our you could talk about it with females, but because of how sensitive we are to the, those conversations, it was just poorly timed. Shouldn't have come out. And it gave more of these people to create distractions from that tweet and to create a totally okay, different Not to be a clog on the wheel, but somebody, I mean, we're supposed to allow Buki to talk about oh, this. Yes. But the, the, the truth of the matter, somebody will also argue and say there's never a right time to bring issues uh, that bothers people because to the fore. Because of how sensitive we are about Sensitive or not, we're sensitive about NSAS. That's why we are agitating. They said these people, uh, particularly yesterday, I think a hashtag queer came out. And they were harassed and they took to social media, put up videos that they are being harassed for participating um, on, in the end as matter. So if the issues are coming up now, should they put it aside? Because it is not uh, comfortable. And sad is not a comfortable conversation, they, but we're having it. They shouldn't, they shouldn't put it aside. But because of the need, there's always those people who are looking for ways to, you know, dis... Um, to, they're looking for ways to create distractions. And so there are certain things that you should not give them opportunities to use. And, okay, and that's, so that's where I feel like they... Give us they some more okay, so let, let, me, let me just put some clarification to this. <laughs> yes, so first yes. off, Felicity, I feel like the best time to talk about anything LGBTQ related would be when you have an official... Um, when the, the country... And I'm using Nigeria here. I'm actually referring to the federal government. When, if and when the federal government agree to make it official that we do to actually recognize the fact that we do have these people in this they are, in Nigeria. They have given you a if law. They ever, there is if, no law. Yeah, so that's the thing. If already. they ever come out yes. to say, okay, you know what? We've, we've had governments actually accept it. 
and announce that you know what these people have rights. We accept. We announce the fact that you have rights. And all that. <laughs> if, if they, they do think that, that, that is going to happen, uh, maybe let's, let's talk about what they are saying on social that, media. If they do that in Nigeria, then to we would, part. honestly, people would come out and fight for them. I, I, I think this this time this enters has actually helped rediscover. It's helped us as Nigerians rediscover ourselves. I grew up in a community where people don't lock their doors, where people take care of other people's children. I mean, but lately it just feels like, oh, as we grow older, those things get missing in our community. Well, that that communion gets missing. It's... But now it feels like everyone is standing up for every other person. It feels like that Nigerian spirit is coming out again and we're beginning to rediscover ourselves as Nigerians. So yes, we will come out to fight for the LGBTQ if it does become official. But then for comments on social media, people are saying straight up, I'm not sleeping, Macaroni for example, he says, I'm not sleeping in tents because of LGBTQ. This is hashtag answers. Let's fight this one and win this one. And if the, if it does come to the stage where we need to fight for LGBTQ, then we we'll think about it. That. And that's why, that's why I and once again said it was poorly timed. So, yes. so they put that out to say that, you know, we would, of course, you know, fight for these people if, you know, if need be. They are also victims of police brutality. Mm -hmm. Don't push them away from the protest. Yeah. Don't reject them, you know, at protest grounds because they also suffer it. But it was just the timing that was wrong. Yeah, and it gave people the opportunity to use that as a distraction from the yeah, mind. But so I like so, wait, wait, no, one, one in last interest thing, of time. Yeah, one yeah. last thing. Though. But I like one tweet that I saw. It was from Ade Doi. And basically what she was saying was that hashtag NSAS, hashtag LBTQ, whatever the case is, we are all fighting for. As if, if the SARS officials attack LG, the LGBTQ community, then we are still fighting for the same cause. Exactly. So hashtag NSAS covers all this. This fight is one fight. It all falls under the hashtag NSAS, which I honestly feel just sums it up. Yeah. It just wraps up the conversation. Yeah, yeah. but, but well, Nigerians are too sensitive to stuff like that. That's yeah. why. All right, uh, we asked our social media followers to suggest ways to end or uh, curb police brutality in Nigeria. And to this, we got several responses. All right, uh, we have, um, I think his name is what now, at testing or year one. It says uh, that we should... Um, have a civilian oversight committees in every ward and council that gets a monthly report of uh, pl uh, police activities in that ward and uh, council. The committee cannot have immediate relatives of police on the board. The committee is open to every member of that community without a criminal conviction. The committee board members should be rotated, not elected, every three months. Uh, we also have uh, at LSCC Life says... Reformation begins with dismantling this whole government and start afresh. Rollins of Ghana did it, and we need, it, we need to as well. Oh, okay. Um, also, we have Thun Atun Dara also says uh, on YouTube, the easiest way to decriminalize public recording on camera phones, um, or rather the easiest way is to decriminalize uh, public recording on camera phones, allow every citizen record the activities of the police. Finally, at Nati Rebel supports Tondara saying Nigerians should be empowered by legislation to take photos of law enforcement officers engaging in unprofessional misconduct and other forms of crime and submit it to the authorities as evidence against them as it is done in developed world. You too can join the conversation. Of course, our social media handle is at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, uh, YouTube also across all popular social media platforms. So drop your comments regarding the topics we post daily using the hashtag Plus TV Africa or send your comments and opinions to us on WhatsApp 0906005719. And we would share them here on the breakfast. We're looking forward to them. Keep them coming. I uh, must say thank you very much, Buki, for coming on the breakfast this oh, morning. Welcome. It was a pleasure. I was right. interested in share, um, sharing conversation with you and, of course, talking about these things. Same here. Stay with us. Uh, of course, we have uh, Off the Press coming right next. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.